That's lighter than I thought. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night will stop this indie warrior from talking about Leak. Hey everybody, this is Wireless Ryan, and today we are chatting about the new indie game called Leak. It's 1985, and you have a super stressful job in the city in the computer craze era. So you're taking time out of your job for about two weeks to take over your father's mayor carrier route while he is going to Florida on a retirement trip. You're going back to your old hometown, which in your early 30s, which I guess is Meredith's age, sometimes feels a little bit bittersweet. There's a lot of people who remember you. There's a lot of new people. Everything kind of changes when you're gone. The pacing in the game is great. It doesn't go too slow and it picks up after the game is really sure that you have the basic mechanics down of delivering the mail. The game always starts out where in the morning you're going to deliver mail, then there's things to do in the afternoon, and then something to do in the evening. So the game doesn't have a timing system though, so you can take your time delivering the mail and chatting with the locals. You can explore different areas in the woods, just stand on the bridges, you can go through different areas, so you're not timed based on the fact that you're delivering the mail. But if you wanted to go a little bit faster so that you could go and do other things before you end your work day, there is a fast travel option, automatic driving, so it'll just drive you over there, or you can control the vehicle. It's up to you, however you want to travel, it doesn't make a difference. So there's a bunch of different characters in the game, and they're all pretty fun and quirky. They're very small town, but you do get to choose who you make friends with or who you don't really interact extra with. You have dialogue choices, so you can make the decision to be really friendly to people or un friendly to people and kind of standoffish, so it's up to you. There are lots of little side quests that you can do for people. You can help the cat lady bring her cat to the local fisherman who is kind of super familiar with animals, so he'll help you with the cat. Or you can help the girl at the video store to help drum up business. There's, there's little things to do aside from delivering the mail. And it really packs a lot into the two weeks that you're there. If you're friendly with everybody, you're making dates you're hanging out with people in the evening, you're going places, so it was really cool. And it really does nail that feeling of coming back home to a small town. You really understand that Meredith left home 22 years ago and didn't look back. She really never came back to visit anybody. None of them have seen her in 22 years. But the story isn't linear. Your choices really do matter in how the game plays out. There are romance options, but you don't have to romance anyone if you don't want to. So if you wanted to just be friends with everybody, or if you wanted to see if romance was your bag, but then kind of made a decision not to do it, which is what I ended up doing, it doesn't matter. You get to make that choice. And at the end of the game, it really does matter if you're going to stay or if you're going to go. There's actually a few different options at the end of the game. I don't want to ruin it. And all of your interactions within the game lead up to that. The voice acting is top notch. Everybody has great voices. Their inflection is perfect. They did a wonderful job with the voice direction. I do wish that the lip syncing was there. Sometimes it looks great. Sometimes there's nothing there. There was an awkward moment on the watchtower where both of the girls are laughing and there's no lip movement. So it was a little strange. There were a few technical glitches. Uh, sometimes the packages wouldn't be picked up from the back of the truck and a lot of glitches with the automatic driving. So just as a heads up, there are a few technical glitches that I'm sure they're going to fix in a future patch. The music does get a little bit repetitive. It's catchy and sets the tone for the area and there is an explanation within the game that explains why it's so repetitive but it still doesn't kind of forgive it being as repetitive as it is in the beginning of the game. There's literally two songs and that's all you have for the entire day. I wish they had a little bit more variety, but the graphics are absolutely stunning. I caught myself quite a few times getting out of the mail truck just to stand on the bridges and look at the scenery. It's really, really pretty. They did a wonderful job. 
The character models are really well done. I like the art style there was really cool. And the atmosphere of the game is really gorgeous and really feels small towny. It doesn't feel that it is too big of an area to be a teeny tiny town like this, but all the little neighborhoods are very fleshed out. It does feel like a small town. I wish there were more people walking around in the town area. It would have felt a little bit more alive, but it is what it is. The game is a little bit short, but with multiple endings, you kind of do want a game to be only about four to five hours. That way you can enjoy it again. Like I said, there's so many different choices that you can make. Despite technical glitches, this game is my very first Golden Genie Lamp Award. I felt this game was really relaxing and the characters in the town were super charming and full of really fun personalities. And I'm also basing this on the replayability or the ability to watch somebody else play the game all the way through again. And I would absolutely watch someone play this game again to see their choices and all of the different endings. Hello? There it is, Steve. Uh, hope I didn't wake you up. I just came home and was wondering if everything worked out all right. Hi, Steve. Yes, we made the deadline. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I feel so bad you couldn't make it. Hope you guys had a nice Labor Day party. Oh, yes. I mean, the band was great, and Mike fell in the pool. <laughs> oh, and then Roy got really sick. No, wait, Brian. And then he fell in the pool, too. And and thank you so much to our indie warriors, because without you, it would be impossible for us to bring a voice to the voiceless. So thank you, Mitchell Hall, Bunny, Kevlo, Bill Tikas, Christian Cruz, Strickdine, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, Falco Lombardi, C Coil, Skeptism, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Julian Colbus, and JRSA. Thank you guys so much, and if you're wondering how you can help us bring a voice to the voiceless, check out the description box and see how you can become an indie warrior. I'm Wireless Riot, and I'll see you in the next video.